Good evening and welcome to Arnold Anderson Stadium, Reese Maney along with Colin Ward. We are back. Apologies back. for the game on Saturday, prior engagements for both of us, but we're back and it's a beautiful night for baseball here in Brantford, Ontario, and it's a very big game for the visitors. The Guelph Royals are here to take on the hometown Brantford Red Sox. Guelph Royals are chasing down not just second, but they are in reach of first place in the IBL standings. Final week of the season, couldn't be more exciting. Yeah, the Guelph Royals are chasing down history right now at the moment, Reese. I mean, they're two games back behind the London Major, just a half a game behind the Welland Jackfish for second place. It's awfully close there, and the Guelph Royals are nipping at the heels, winning five games in a row, 301 runs scored on the season. Just a eight and two as well in their last 10. Solid ball club, Reese. And we said this in about June, July, beginning of July on Canada Day weekend, we mentioned that this Guelph Royals team is sneaky good. They're underrated, and then all of a sudden, don't look now with a week to go in the season. Just two games out of first place. And I might add, we have a lot of Welland and London Brantford fans tonight. Absolutely we do. Before we get underway, time to go over the Guelph Royals starting lineup. Leading things off, playing left field is Ashton Patterson batting second. Claudio Custodio, he is the shortstop for the Guelph Royals tonight. Dalton Pompey is in center field batting third. Malik Collymore hits fourth. He's at third base tonight. Jeff McLeod is in the five spot as a designated hitter. Noah Roberts hits sixth at first. Owen Ellis bats seventh. He is the right fielder for the Guelph Royals. Darius Barless is at second base batting eighth. And Brian Sewell is behind the plate batting ninth. And starting on the mound, Number 77, Brandon Deans. Yeah, Brandon Deans on the season. Reaches 3-2 on the year. 2.30 ERA in 14 games it's so far on the year. Two saves as well. 27 to third innings pitch. 42 strikeouts, 20 walks. Strikeout to walk ratio for Beans. We are almost set for baseball here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. There is a rain warning. As we speak, I think we looked at the radar, what? 8.30? 8.30, 9 o'clock. We're expecting some rain. Might be a soaker. Knock on some wood. We don't get that, but uh, that is in the forecast for about a half hour, 20 minutes time here. As the Guelph Royals get ready to come to the plate, and we'll start with the Brantford Red Sox starting pitcher. Colin, we saw him in London on Friday. Uh, Bennett yeah. Moore towing the rubber again. Yeah, you know, Bennett didn't look too bad on Friday. Honestly, didn't look too bad for the score what it was. Bennett, I thought, pitched a pretty good ball game. Just got to continue to attack hitters with his fastball, get ahead in the counts, and then have fun with the breaking ball. First pitch of the night is on the outside corner. Strike one, and we are underway. Yeah, there's a first pitch fastball away to the lefty. Yeah, you talk about how Bennett Moore looked in that game on Friday. That's back-to-back -back games with five errors for the Red Sox. Both in London, of course, 12 nothing on the Tuesday and then a 20-4 loss on the Friday. Yeah, Bennett's 0-9 on the season. This being his 12th appearance, he's pitched in 11 games, 9.94 ERA, 39 strikeouts, 39 walks. The nothing in two just off the plate outside. You know what, Reese? That's a perfect 2-0-2 pitch there to start off on. Nice 0-2 pitch there, just off the block. That's as close as you want it. That's a perfect pitch on 0-2. You don't have to throw one over the plate. See if you can get a chase. More into the windup, the 1-2. Ball gonna be hit on the ground to first base. Evan Ryan will field, Bennett Moore covering. And there's your first out of the night. Nice hop there, that's the hop Evan Ryan wanted over there at first base. Get that hop right at the waist, come up at the last minute. Perfect timing out of the lip. As we go on throughout this game, you'll see it once we go over the Brantford Red Sox starting lineup in between innings here, but there are a lot of different looks around the diamond, you might say. Uh, again, we'll go through it after the top of the first inning. Definitely a different face in left field, I can tell you that right now. Yeah. First pitch to Claudio Custodio is in there for a strike. Shortstop tonight what a, for the Guelph Royals. What a season Custodio is having. 354. Here's the 0-1. It is in there, strike two, Bennett Moore. First two hitters of the night. I like gets, his approach. Gets up 0-2 on both of them. Yeah, I like Bennett's approach so far at the start of the game, Reese. Attack with your fastball, then work your way out with the fun stuff. Fun stuff being his secondary pitches. Here's the nothing in two. It is gonna be hit right back up the middle, actually off of second base. And into center field, a base hit. Andrew Gorecki 
The center fielder tonight for the Red Sox will grab it and get it into the infield. So there's the first hit of the night. It comes with one out in the first. Yeah, what can Custodio do? Batting 436 on the season, Reese. What a season he's having. He's got to be one of the MVP favorites in the IBL. Him and Robert Mullen probably one and two at this time. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Mullen has been on a tear what a story for the London is. Majors. And what a story Custodio is as well. So he pitches too. Red Sox haven't faced him this year, but he can pitch. Lively arm. Two pitch pitcher. Former MLB draft pick. He's pitched for the Buffalo Bisons. Here's the 1 0 to Pompey. It is going to be hit in the air in deep right field. Roger Keane just going to take a look. And Dalton Pompey has put the Guelph Royals on top early. They lead it 2 0 as that was a no doubter to right field. That's a no doubter off the Brantford uh, County truck out in right field as they're putting away their pregame tarp and stuff off the Gator. Pompey's fourth home run of the season. Comes in with 17 home run, 17 RBIs. Now at 19 with the two run shot. Just like that, number four makes it two nothing for the Royals. You just knew it right off the bat and that's kind of been something that Sox have had trouble with this year. You talk about how much success the number nine hitter has had against the Brantford Red Sox, but you would think at this park, not really a home run park per se, but we've seen quite a few long balls here. You want to lift down the lines. You don't see a lot of mid to center field shots at this park. It's a deep center field, and it plays true to that. 1-0 to Collie Moore is inside. Count two balls, no strikes. Yeah, unless your name is Dan Perrier and the bases are loaded. Ooh, that bat flip. <laughs> yeah, how high? That, that went as high as the backstop. Maybe yeah. just under. Yeah, I wish we had a measuring stick. Got to get stat cast on that. Oh, the IBL stat cast. Don't get me started with that one, Reese. 2 0 swung on and missed. The IBL desperately needs a stat cast. By the way, with all the, game, with all the games being broadcasted, I believe we're a couple years away from video review. <laughs> we got internet connection. Mark, mark the date, August 17th. Colin Ward predicts. Groundbreaking events. Video review in the IBL. Brantford, Ontario. 2 1. Looks like Moore went with the change up there. Got the nice outside pitch. part of the plate. Nice pitch. Well, when you're facing a guy like Cully Moore, Pompey, Custodio, you got to throw that breaking ball. Hit the pitch carefully to them. Started 2 0. The count now 2 2. Moore is into the windup. The pitch oh, is a breaking, a breaking ball, ball, and it came around the plate inside. Nice breaking ball there by Ben Moore on the 12 6 curveball. Just downhill. That's a jaw-dropping curveball. That's one when you're in the ballpark, you're like, oh, that you're waiting for the hand to go up by the umpire. Awfully close. The 3-2 is going to be hit on the ground, up the middle, and that's going to get into center field for a base hit. Third hit of the night already for the Royals. And yeah, we've saw that before from them. This is the Perry Bay Cats are two teams that really come in early, and they are aggressive. They don't get cheated in that bats, that's for sure. I don't mind that. Hang on, watch out for calling more on the base passes. By the way, last Collie Moore at bat was off a house here at our Anderson Stadium. It was way foul. We could do the Google Maps thing if it happens again, because now we know the location. First pitch to McLeod is ball one. Yeah, we've seen quite a few shots. We've seen a, a stat few, cast on that. We've seen a few wall scrapers, but there have been quite a few bombs. One O oh, is fouled straight back. Talk about bombs. You, Look at Austin Wilkie, Ooh. the shot that he hit, no doubter, comes in, pinch hit, three-run homer. Yeah, the Red Sox have given up a lot of pinch hit home runs this season. Just the season that it's been for the Sox, it, the breaks have been tough to find. The, it's it, it has not been good, to say the least. Yeah, by the way, Moore gets away with one there with the hanger. Yes, he did. Count one ball, two strikes. That was a hanging curveball right over the inner half of the plate. To a lefty, too. Pitch to McLeod is going to be popped up right on the there. infield. Orozco is going to come way over in the shallow left. He's going to make the catch. And there is out number two. Yeah, the third baseman in Clangelo just did not see that baseball. No, you can tell he's still looking up at the sky, kind of wondering where that came from. There is a light standard in behind that those bleachers along the first base side, but early in the ball game, you wouldn't expect that to be a factor. But immediately, as runner is off on the pitch, the throw is offline. 
The stolen base from Malik Collymore, and he's in the scoring position. Hoping to put Guelph up by a trio as Noah Roberts now hits. By the way, Jeff McLeod, by 222 on the season. As Roberts steps in. Yeah, immediately Colangelo gave way to a Rose Co who had to come a long way. Here's the 0-1. It has popped foul. And again, third 0-2 count for Bennett Moore here early. He's given up the That's bomb, positive. but getting up no balls, two strikes. Hey, at the beginning of the season, about two months ago, we saw a lot of 2-0 counts from Bennett. It's nice to see those 0-2. The last two, three starts out of Bennett, we see him getting ahead in counts. Looks a lot more comfortable early on in the bats. Here's the 0-2. It is going to be hit on the ground to first base. Evan Ryan going to Bennett. keep it in front. Flip over to Bennett Moore, and that's how the first inning will end. But thanks to a two-run homer from Dalton Pompey, a no-doubter to right field. Gulf Royals lead it by two after half an inning. Sox coming to bat here in the first. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Demaney along with Colin Ward. Time to go over the Brantford Red Sox starting lineup. At the top, Jamil Orozco is back in. He's a shortstop. Nick Burdett moves up to the two spot. He's a designated hitter for tonight's ball game. Evan Ryan is over at first batting third. Roger Keane, the right fielder, is batting fourth. Brady Pomerleau doing the catching second straight game as he was behind the plate in Toronto. Aiden Colangelo is the third baseman batting sixth. Graham Tebbit, yeah, you see that correctly. Graham Tebbit is the left fielder tonight batting seventh. Nolan Gallagher is at second batting eighth. And Andrew Grecki, center fielder, batting ninth. And of course, we've already, already chatted about Bennett Moore. As we get ready for the Sox to hit first time tonight. Also your Redford Red Sox, number two, shortstop Jamil Orozco. This first inning presented by Brantford Nissan. Make sure you check out the all-new 2022 Nissan Titan as the first pitch by Orozco is bounced right at home plate. It'll get foul. Located at 338 King George Road in Brantford, or you can visit them online at BrantfordNissan.com. Royals with a two spot in the top of the first. Dalton Pompey with a two-run homer to right. Here's the 0-1. Ball is going to be hit in the air to left field. That ball is a lot deeper than we originally thought. It's going to get up against the wall. Orozco is going to get into second base standing up. And it's a leadoff double for the Sox shortstop. Yeah, it looked like left fielder Ashton Patterson had a tough read off the bat. Didn't read that ball well off the bat. It drives the left fielder all the way to the wall. Now, Jamila Orozco down on one knee. Yeah, it looked like an awkward swing too. Pitch well, was inside. Became, it was. It's kind of like that little league swing where when you're facing the old Ephus ball pitcher Reese, and you get that pitch inside and you step up and just crank one, just pull it down the line. That's what that swing looked like. It's a very unorthodox swing there by Orozco. And it looks like Orozco here, is being yeah. Being and note here, the Red Sox don't have one position player on the bench tonight. 
Perhaps that's why Graham Tebbett's playing in left field this evening. Immediately started off well for a Rose going for the Sox offense, but not good right now as it looks like he's flexing that left arm. Yeah, pulled something in that elbow area. Like you said, Colin, nobody on the bench. He's going to have to stay in. Yeah, and let's take a look at that Red Sox bench tonight. So Danny Howitt, Aiden Stam, Gabe Bruder, and Alex Gowing. That's all. Four guys, all pitchers. Gabe Bruder go back to his shortstop second base days. I was about to junior. say that. About to mention that Gabe Bruder, a little shortstop before, played left field last year in a game. He had that bat. Looks like Orozco will stay in the game, Reese. Red Sox can't have any ejections tonight. No. Hey, I got my glove in the car. I'll be ready to go. E pug. <laughs> e -bug. We almost the e pugs last yeah. week in London. Better not say that on Friday when Toronto's here. I heard the word e-bug scares the city of Toronto, so better Maybe avoid that word. Yeah. First pitch to Burdett is high, ball one. Final home game here at Arnold Anderson Stadium in the regular season is against those Maple Leafs. It is an 8 p.m. start. Yeah, so that's a, the works game. First 50 fans to the giveaway. 1-0 pitch, misses ball two. Yeah, first 50 fans to the ballpark on Friday. Get a free Tower O Rings. Ooh. 2 0 count here to Burdett. Watch out, Reese. Look, big hacks here. If it's up, let it fly. Ball is going to be bobbled at first. Throw recovery is going to be thrown away. That's going to allow a Roseco to come in to score. Is he still hobbling after that double? Nick Burdett puts the ball in play and gets rewarded. And the Sox are on the board. They've cut the lead in half. It's two to one. It may be something in his eye. Might have a little bit of debris in his eye. We saw the water bottle. I don't have any eye drops. Well, that'll bring up Evan Ryan. That'll be interesting because it was a hard hit ball. Tough to see how they score that. First pitch to Ryan misses, ball one. Ooh, never have that Ryan there, Reese. Look downtown Brantford on that shot. He let that front foot fly. Burnett not being held on at first. 1-1 one, one is fouled off right side. Nothing else going on here at Cockshut Park on a Wednesday night. Of course, this game being made up from a couple of Sundays ago. Season starting to wind down in the minor ball. Yeah, getting into Intercounty Baseball Association, getting into the playoffs, Ontario Baseball Association Championships. Exciting of course, guys. going down Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Evan Ryan even in the count here with Deans. Two balls, two strikes. 10U team qualified. That's already the, for OBAs. Hey, you know what's a, you know what's kind of crazy, Reese? It's already been six years since we played you guys in the ICBA finals. We're old. That's that's yeah. As, as we're 24. <laughs> yeah. So I guess old for us. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Here's another 2-2 two -two to Ryan. It is in the dirt. Check swing. Did he go? He did not. And the count is now full. Four-man crew today, by the way, for the umpires. Yeah. Nick Leffler calling the balls and strikes. We've had Nick Leffler a ton this season. Yeah. Here's a 3-2 pitch. It is off the plate outside. Ball four. First and second now for the Sox. Nobody out. Yeah, the Red Sox now three straight batters on base. Yeah, 
Next up at bat, number 14, right fielder, Roger Keane. Outfield's playing Keane very deep. Keane, a couple of home runs this year. Wardy, you never know. The other way, pulled one at Jack Couch, hit one the other way a week later. Six days later. Yeah, he went on a stretch there for a couple of weeks where guys couldn't get him out, whether he walked, got a hit. He had a good stretch there. Roger's one of those guys where he's got a short, quick swing. L1, swung on and missed. Keen way behind. For, if it hits his bat path, it's going to go. Deans is going to provide a lot of the power. That's the thing, right? The pitchers in the IBL, they throw hard. They throw gas, right? You're going to get those. Here's a nothing in two to Keen. It is going to be hit on the ground up the, the middle. Royals going to go for the double play. They will. 6 4 3. They just got Keen at first base. Good turn. Middle of the diamond. Custodio to Barless. And then on to first base, Noah Roberts to complete that double play. Burdett does move up to third on the play, but that is a big couple of outs for Brandon Deans on the mound. Yeah, Matt's won a nice turn there. You want to look at the shortstop. Second base duo there, Custodio Barless. Nice positioning there, nice smooth, effortless transition there. Now Brady Palmer low. The 1-0 is low, ball two. That's a good eye. That one looked awfully close to the knees, just below, but that was close. Those are tough to lay off on. Speaking of someone who's very aggressive in the play. Dean's out of the windup. The 2-0 is going to be hit on the ground up the middle. It's going to be an easy out number three as Barless flips on to Roberts at first. And that will retire the side. Sox do get one back. It's a 2-1 to one ball game after one complete here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Pod Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Maney along with Colin Ward. 2-1, Guelph, Guelph leads it after one complete as we head to the top of the second. 7-8-9, due up for the Guelph Royals. That starts with Owen Ellis. Ellis, right fielder tonight for the Royals. First pitch from Moore on the outside corner, strike one. Moore did a good job in that first inning of just pounding the zone early in counts. As we mentioned, a trio of nothing in two counts in that first inning. Just don't be afraid to go away. Go away, away. 
Just can't live over the middle of the plate like you did against Pompeii. Exactly. Two strikes, we're away, especially in so two. The one one is in the dirt to the backstop. Don't be afraid to work off the plate. Two one stays inside again to the backstop, and the count is three balls and one strike. A lot of movement on that fastball there, Reese. Defense pretty straight up for the Sox. We're so early on in the game. You'll see the adjustments come as we move on. The 3 1 is going to be hit on a line right field, and Keene's going to let it drop in front of him. A leadoff single here in the second, and the Guelph Royals are quickly looking to get that run back. Yeah, that ball just kept going away from the right fielder, Keene. Yeah, really the only play he had on is if he would have left his feet. Yeah, and I think it would have been tough, those, probably would have gone to the wall. Yeah, and that's one of those there where if it rolls down to the wall, you're looking at inside the park, triple territory. Now Darius Barless, second baseman. There goes the runner, first pitch, it is fouled off. Hit and run early in the at-bat here for Barless. Put a good swing on it as well, too. Pitch was outside, tried to take that the other way, just a little Smart bit to too far behind it. Smart move there. You got to get that run back if you think well for Royals. Check on Ellis at first. As we mentioned off the top, top, Guelph Royals chasing down first place in the IBL. London Majors currently in first place ahead of the Well and Jackfish. The 0 1 off the plate outside. Good location for Bennett Moore. Just too far out of bed, an inch or two off the plate. See if they put Ellis in motion again. Count one and one. Pitch from Moore. Ellis stays. It is inside. Ball two. Yeah, Bennett's got to drive straight toward his catcher on that one. Yeah, drift it off toward the first base side on those. And the ball tends to sail inside, then the lefties. Direction he was going. 2 1 pitch. Looks like it just missed up. Barely. That was awfully close there. Nice pitch there by Bennett Moore on the fastball. Barless thought about it, but clearly he did not go. Well, it's one of those when you're up 2-1, it's kind of the count where it's got to be good. 3-1 misses for ball four, and the Royals have the first two men on here in the second. Mm -hmm. All right, Ryan Sewell, number nine hitter. See what the Royals do here. Do they play for the big inning or do they lay a bunt down? Number nine hitter. Like the way the ninth hitter is hit in Arnold Anderson Stadium this year, I'm swinging. Yeah. The Royals are a swinging team. Evan Ryan is in on the grass at first. First pitch is in for a strike. And I think clearly there you can tell there was no thought of a bunt. No signs coming from third base as well. So Sewell is free to swing away. Sewell, the Toronto native. Ball going to be thrown into center field. They checked on Ellis, but Very. it'll end up going as an E1, and both runners will move up. Yes, I understand that happens, but very rarely this season there's been a, there's been third base stolen. It's been down. Yeah, you see a lot of second, but you don't really see third being stolen too often. Yeah, just trying to maybe force something out of nothing there. We're pickoff there, yeah. It was slow developing too. Not real. Not a whole lot of urgency. Hill one is way up off of Pomerlo's glove. It's going to get into the dugout out of play. One run will come across to score. Guelph gets that one back, and they regain a two-run lead. It's 3-1. to one. And just like that, a wild throw into center field on a field pickup and a pass ball. Barless moves up as well. He's 90 feet away from crossing home plate. Sox infield... Halfway in, you can say. Corner should be in. Third baseman in. Colangelo needs to come in behind the. He's way behind the bag right now. One one off the plate outside. Yes, come in on the lip. Because you don't have a shot. You're the base runner at third. You're gonna come in, and you don't have a shot. Here's a two one from Moore. It is gonna be 
Hit in the air, shallow center field. Gorecki didn't read it right away. It's going to drop in front of him. That's going to be an RBI single for Sewell, the number nine hitter doing damage once again against the Sox. And the Royals now lead it four to one. Sewell now four for nine on the season. Already five hits in the game for the Guelph Royals. As we head back to the top of the order, Ashton Patterson, 0 for 1. He grounded out to first to begin the ball game. First pitch to him is low, ball one. Here, Bennett, here you're just looking for a ground ball. Quicker move there by Bennett Moore. One of his quicker moves over to first base. We're going to the runners a little bit too much this evening. Moore comes set. The 1-0 is taken for a strike. Patterson looked like he was taking all the way on that pitch. Which is the right idea. The 1-1 is going to be hit on the ground and past Evan Ryan. It's going to go down the right field line. Sewell is going to get to third. Patterson is in the second. It's a double for the Royals' leadoff hitter. <laughs> the line just keeps on moving here in the second inning for the Guelph Royals. Three hits plus a walk unselfish so far. Bats. Yeah, unselfish at bats. And they're basically giving what they're given as well. Red Sox giving the Guelph Royals a lot of opportunities in this inning. I'll start with the Arid pickoff attempt at second base. Ball winding up in center field. And the very next pitch to the backstop. First fastball. pitch to Custodio is high. On the fastball, wild pitch. That was a tough play there, too, though, for the first baseman, Evan Ryan, on that last hit. It was a rocket off the bat. The 1 0. Swung on and missed. He just tried to put three on the board. Custodio. Yeah, and Custodio was almost turned sideways on that backswing. I think you want to go to the Sobeys Plaza on that one. 1-1. One, one. In for strike two. <laughs> the 1-2-2 two, two Custodio is going to be fouled off. Moore went back to that Tell you. Outside corner, but it caught too much of the plate. Yeah, and if you're the catcher here in Pomelo, you want to set up outside. Set up on that white chalk. Set up way outside and call that breaking ball. You want to get great below the knees. Something in the dirt. Well, make sure you get miss. down. Exactly. Get in a good position to block that baseball. Square up. One, two, foul tip, strike three. Tell you. There's the first out of the second. That was very risky pitching there by Bennett Moore. That pitch was inside. Two. Custodio wanted that pitch, and that's when he's going to want back. He got that in on the hands. When you saw the first two swings in the at-bat, he looked downtown on those, right? He got the pitch he wanted and never executed. Now well, here is Dalton Pompey, two-run homer, his first time up. No doubter to right field. Here's the first pitch from Moore. It is taken upstairs, ball one. Now the 1-0. Outside corner, strike one. One thing about Dalton Pompey that I keep seeing more times than not throughout the week, every time scrolling through Facebook, you always see that video. You know, you like MLB, you like the Jays on, on, on Facebook. The seventh inning against the Texas Rangers <laughs> in the postseason always comes up. That inning. What an inning that was. What an atmosphere that was. 2015. Blue Jays slumping right now, but when you watch that atmosphere and you go to Rogers Center, you think with the new upgrade, by the way, coming next season, the outfield, 
what an atmosphere that would be in the postseason. Here's the 2-1. Upstairs, ball three. Not a good count you want to be in against Dalton Pompey. Plus, Pompey playing in Texas and playing in Kansas City as well in that, that season. What a year that was. Two tough ballparks to play in. Texas wasn't a fun place to go play. And obviously going to Kansas City, that was a madhouse. You know, all about that being a Tigers fan. Kansas City can rock. Yeah, good old Kauffman Stadium. Nice ballpark. It is. Very nice. AL Central has a lot of nice parks. Cleveland's nice. Comerica's I'm going to say the baseball is a little... Yeah, but the parks are there. Rough, but the parks are definitely up there for sure. Here's the 3-1. It is inside ball four. Free pass to Dalton Pompey. Not the worst outcome you could have. But the bases are now loaded full of Royals. You know, if you've been a money step off the mound right now, you think ground ball, double play. Hey, better than the last at bat. Yeah, one thing's for sure in the American League Central, you do not play at any Little League parks like the AL East. Oh. There are no Yankee stadiums, not even close. It's awesome to see the Baltimore Orioles. The Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, after bring they the push their fence back. Bring the walls back. <laughs> yeah. What are they, game out of the playoff spot now? Oh, my God. Winning a massive series against the Jays. Here's the 1-0 to Collymore. It is off the plate outside. Collymore is one for one. He singled, but was stranded at second in the first. He is the seventh man to bat in the inning for the Royals. One out. Here's the 2-0. It is not even close. And it goes to the backstop. Royals are going to get another. It's now 5-1. Royals keep pouring it on. We're only in inning number two. We knew we would see Guelph's best. That's for sure. Like you said, so close to first place. What a game that will be. 3-0 right down the middle. What a game that will be on Friday evening. You'd have to think. Yeah. Because Studio and uh, Arias be the pitching matchup you would think or Arias for the majors Stodio for the Royals 3-1 is popped up foul territory right side Pomerlo and Ryan both chasing after it Pomerlo near the dugout but unable to make the play so another life for Malik Collymore the count is now full three balls two strikes and for the Sox this will be game number one of four to end the regular season this week They'll do it again Friday night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then these two teams will battle for the last time this season. That goes at Hastings Stadium on Saturday. Sox are going to finish the weekend and regular season in Barrie. 7 o'clock start in Barrie. I don't know. Figure that one out. Here's the 3-2. It is going to be hit on a line to second base and caught by Gallagher. And that is out number two. I like, I like those end of the year day games. I like yeah. that ended early. Like whether or not that has something to do with it being a seven o'clock start, seven thirty start in Guelph on the Saturday, but I think the last games of the year should always be a day game. It would be it yeah. makes it a lot easier. Yeah, my only argument for that would be is the Barry Bay Cats defeated the Kitchener Panthers twenty to one on a Saturday night and had to come here for a two o'clock start. Yeah. So don't tell me it hasn't been done. But <laughs> That just doesn't Good make luck. a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah, very true. Every other game that day is at 2 o'clock. Yeah, it makes sense. Here's the 0-1. It is fouled straight back. By the way, the playoffs started today. And I know the Guelph Royals, they don't want to look at this because the Guelph Royals, they're looking up only to climb and only a half a game back behind the well and Jackfish. But the Guelph Royals will play the Kitchener Panthers in the first round. What a matchup that would be. Just up threes, you get the Guelph yeah. Royals and Kitchener Panthers going yeah, at it in Sun the playoffs. Yeah, and Sunday, by the way, Kitchener Rangers Day at the ballpark at Jack Couch. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Red Sox will play the Mage. Francesco Pinelli appearance? Hey. Captain for the Rangers. Here's the one, two. It is swung on and missed. And that will retire the side. Guelph Royals send eight men to the plate. 
and they score three more times after an inning and a half. It's 5-1 Guelph. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium, Reese Demaney along with Colin Ward. Well, for Orioles lead at 5-1 as we begin the bottom of the second inning. Aiden Colangelo to lead things off. First pitch inside corner, strike one. Six, seven, and eight due up for the Sox. Colangelo will be followed by Tebbit and Gallagher. The 0-1 right down the middle, strike two. No load there on that pitch from Colangelo. Take all day, which is kind of interesting to see. You already saw one, and all of a sudden you're down 0-2 without a swing. Watch out for that curveball. Here is the nothing in two. It is going to be hit back up the middle into center field, a base hit. Colangelo leads things off with a hit. That's back-to-back -back innings to start the ball game that the Sox have done so. As Roseco led off the first with a double. Yeah, Dean shows a fastball there right over the heart of the plate. Colangelo smokes that ball in the center field, almost off the bag. You imagine that one. Back to back innings off the yeah. bag. Off the second base bag, let alone. I see that every day. Yeah, we've seen it down the line. Second base is new. First pitch to Tebbit. Swung on and missed. Tebbit swinging for the downs. <laughs> Pitchers can rake. This second inning presented uh, by No Frills. A couple of locations in Brantford. One at 108 Colburn Street West, the other 603 Colburn Street East. Here's the 0-1 to Tebbit. Swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes quickly as an errant throw is going to make its way back to second base. Good crowd on hand here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Happens to be Ukrainian night at the ballpark. Here's the 0-2. Check swing. Did he go? He did not. And the Guelph Duggar doesn't like that one, and that was awfully close there. You can probably see that on your screen. I thought he went. Yeah, 50-50 call. You kind of flip that, a coin and see. You see the hands go, and it's like, okay, and then you see the hips go with it, right? And then it's like, okay, we got you. And both went that time. One, two, swung on and missed. And there is out number one as Tebbit goes down on strikes. Very aggressive approach there by Tebbit. Three big swings. Yeah, then a check. That's another thing too, right? Grab Tebbit in that situation. You go up here and swing mode the first two pitches. All of a sudden you get a pitch in her half that's inside. Lay off on it. Get the check. Here's Nolan Gallagher. Oftentimes you tend to drift and go. First pitch in for a strike. 
And it's odd, right? You'll hear broadcasters say swing mode, and it's very true. You go into it at bat, and you're in swing mode. You're thinking, I'm swinging. It's just a mental mindset. Deans has started off every hitter in the second inning here with a strike. 0-1 fouled off, and it caught Nick Leffler behind the plate. You see the catcher. Just on the arm. And then they'll give Nick Leffler a little bit of time. Of course, the last game here at Arnold Anderson Stadium did not finish. If anyone's wondering, they ended up calling it 17-1 to the final against the visiting Welland Jackfish. Their final trip here to Arnold Anderson Stadium. The 0-2 in the dirt. Gallagher able to hold up. Ended up meeting the voice of the Jackfish on the weekend, Brendan Lang. Called the Canada Summer Games together. Ended up being a good day. Ontario taking home the title over Alberta. Yeah. 1-2 is going to be lined into center field. That's a base hit. Colangelo going around second. He'll stop there. Sox up first and second with one out. Here in the second as they look to try and answer. After Guelph put up three in the top half of the second. Now for Andrew Gorecki here, the ninth hitter for the Red Sox. He's got to get on pace with Orozco on deck. Got to get Orozco, but guys on pace. I know it's early on, it's probably tough to say this, but a Rosco tying run is in, is on deck you know right what? now. It's a big but that pitch massive. is gonna come to the backstop. Second and third, there goes the double play. That's massive. So now you're gonna get a Rosco up to the plate. I mean he Let's go. Come on! Nobody at the plate. Did he get there? He did not. Colangelo is out trying to get home. And that's just kind of why. Why, yeah. Like you said, Orozco on deck, who led off the game, who led off the offensive game for the Sox with a double. Well, Colangelo is not known to be a big base runner as well, Reese, and it's kind of interesting decision. You got the top of the order. Now all of a sudden, like you mentioned, you have the ninth hit. You have the ninth hitter on. With guys on third and second when one out, all of a sudden, you try to take home plate. Two out for the ninth hitter. That's a head scratcher. I yeah. don't quite get that move, Reese. You have to have confidence in the top of your order. Right? We, and we mentioned with the Guelph Royals, Guelph Royals earning their runs basically unearned. I mean, a wild pickoff into second base, and then a next pitch, wild pitch, pass, ball, scores. You got to be able to sacrifice. You got to be patient. As you mentioned, it's early. 1-0 in for a strike. Yeah, early, but you're already down by four runs. You can't runs. be giving away outs. Yeah. You can't be giving away yeah. runs in that situation. Yeah. Guys on scoring position, two guys in scoring position with one out. Now just one with two out. 1-1 one, one swung on and missed. Yeah, you got a team on the other side chasing for a pennant right now. You yeah. know you know that every out, every pitch well, means a lot to them right and, now. And, and you, know you want to play spoiler, in. of course. But the look on Dean's face when he saw Clangelo running was like, oh, okay. 1-2 swung on and missed, and that will end the inning. I think that play almost caught Guelph off guard. And Grecky laid on that fastball. Nice fastball there by Dean's up and in. So attempting for the hitter to get that swing, and that's, yes, he does get that swing. Sox with a couple of hits in the inning, but nothing across. We've played two complete. It is 5 1 Guelph. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Pot Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Demaney along with Colin Ward. 5-1 Royals as we begin the top of the third inning. First pitch from Moore is down low for a ball. Noah Roberts leads things off. He is 0-for-1. He grounded out to first to end the first inning. You know, one more one more touching point. I want to touch on that. Attempted to steal home, Reese. What? You get momentum back in the game. Yes, it's not a lot of momentum, but you had a little bit of momentum on your side for the Red Sox. Why are you unearning it, giving it away? Yeah, yeah just a move that, you know, come not late in the game, it. and it's close, one, two run ball game. You look at that, and that's that's a rally killer. It is. Yeah, that's deflating. Now watch the golf Royals have a massive inning. Two in the first, three in the second for the Royals. Two one is high. And you look back at moments in the game. Yeah, just try, like, like we talked about with that throw out to second base. Bennett Moore, you're trying yeah. to create something out of nothing. Nothing's there for the take. Almost too aggressive. Almost, It's almost like the Red Sox are in a spot to move up in the standings where the Guelph Royals are looking for a pennant. Where oftentimes when you see the team that's up in the standings like the Guelph Royals are, try to force things that aren't there. 3-2 is high, ball four. Roberts reaches to begin the third. Yeah, we're going to get full throttle from the Guelph Royals all night long. Yeah. No lead to save from the IBL. And where they are in the standings, they need the run scored. They need that. We are totally expecting that. First pitch to Ellis is going to be lined up the middle into center field, a base hit. Gallagher tried to throw up a decoy at first, but it's able to sneak through. And Ellis now two for two on the day. Royals again, first and second, nobody out. Golf Royals, by the way, nine and nine on the road this season. That's kind of been the one thing that's holding them back. But just barely, just a half a game behind the wall of Jackfish. Win would put them a game back at the London Majors. First pitch to Barless is high. Yeah, Wellen can feel Guelph breathing down their necks. They're right there. And again, for a team that didn't play last year to be in this situation. They, did, they did it right. You know, when you take it, when you take the year off like that, they did it the right way. They approached it with a solid plan. They got the players they wanted, the players they needed, and there's a quality product on the field. They did it the right way. And also the shortstop who has the bag in that play, didn't even make a move. As Ben Moore looked over, stepped off and looked over. 1-1, one, one, not close. Pomerlo able to snag it. I'm Brady Pomerlo right now. I'm going out to the mound and I'm going to talk to Bennett Moore and say, hey, focus on me. Focus on the batter. That won't happen, but eventually should go out there and have that talk. One walk, one hit in the inning so far for the Royals. First and second, nobody out. The 2-1 is on the outside corner. Count is now even. Yeah, a lot of good baseball for the Guelph Royals being played at Hastings Stadium this year. The fans have been treated to some very good ball. 2-2, going to be fouled off to the fence. And nice park as well. Played a few games there. Yeah, wasn't the biggest fan of the walk from the clubhouse to the dugout, but Long that's, the, that's the lone flaw. Kitchener can be like that too with the odds. Oh, God. No thanks. That's through even the, worse. Through the, through the front gate. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. It is inside and low. And everyone can hear you coming in Kitchener because of the metal cleats. Everyone can hear you coming through the park. He'll play the Star Wars music. Yes, I was about to say that. I can't even remember the last time I watched Star Wars, to be honest. Here's the 3-2 from Moore. It is fouled straight back. Really good at bat here from Darius Barless. 
Royals are playing for runs. They're not playing for a run. We've seen that here early on in the third now, but the first two innings, they, they're playing for a big inning. They don't just want one. It's the right move. 3-2 is going to be bounced. Foul. I think that's so we'll the, do it again. You know, and that's the best way to win in the IBL. Play for the big inning. A lot of teams bun outs away. In a situation like this, where it's 5-1, play for the big inning. Play for that end inning, you know? Moore said again, here's another 3-2. It is going to be hit on the ground, up the middle. Gallagher bobbled it, flipped to a Rosco. That's all they'll get. That was tailor-made, but... Gallagher just bobbled it at second base. They do get one, but it's first and third with one out. That's one of those reach where you drop down to one knee. You don't have a chance. It almost takes you out of that chance to turn double play because you're not attacking the baseball, and guys get down the line quick. You have to get it and go. You hear first and third. I expect Barless to be off. To be, oh, exactly. 100%. Second pitch. First pitch is going to be hit on the ground to Ryan. He'll go to second base. A rose toe. Nobody's at first. So that will allow a run to score. It is now 6-1 Royals. Sox do get out number two. At first I thought Ryan may have looked home. Thought about that. Yeah, I took the check and then went to second. Because you kind of saw the hesitation on the throw. Reached the double pump. You usually get in trouble when you have that double pump, Reese. If you're going to be an infielder, that internal clock is such an underrated skill. First pitch to Patterson is low. Already his third plate appearance of the game. He grounded to first in the first, and then he doubled one inning ago, part of a three-run frame for the Royals. Here's the 1-0. It is taken right down Broadway. Strike one. I tell you. Massive that bad here for the pitcher as well, Bennett Moore. Out to get Patterson. Custodio on deck, Pompey in the hole. 1-1 one, one pitch. In for a strike. Nice Not pitch. Not a whole there. lot of people liked it, especially nice from the pitch. right side. But. Yeah, but you know what? That's a nice pitch. That's a nice breaking ball. That's a pitch there where it was so nasty inside with the break on the corner of the plate. That's one of those things where you just hope it's not a strike. One, two, there goes the runner. The pitch is inside. Throw down is a little bit too high. Sewell is able to get there. Quick release, though. Quick release, there, though, by the catcher Pomelo on that one. Impressed with the release on that one. Yeah, the throw got there just a little bit too just high. Just high, yeah. Just tailed off a little bit, but it was quick. It was in and out quick, and it was smooth. Good transition. Count now two and two. I see the catcher Pomelo on two feet as well behind the plate. Pitch from Moore just stayed high. One run already in. Royals lead 6-1. Sewell the runner at second. Moore takes a look. Here's the 3-2. It is low ball four. And the inning will continue. Royals now first and second, two outs. Claudio Custodio, he is one for two. First pitch to him is in for a strike. Custodio singled and scored back in the first and struck out in the second. The 0-1. Ball is going to be hit in the air down the left field line, but it's going to hook foul. So I'd also like to give a shout out. Wednesday, August 17th marks the start of the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Hey, nice. Hey, shout out, Reese. That's a good one. I was one win away. Still haunts me to this day, Wardy. Yeah, what an experience that would be. 
2010 Canada Canadian Championship. That was 2010. And Castor, Ontario. We got absolutely destroyed by British BC. Columbia. Yeah, British Columbia. Yeah. Went that, yeah. They went on a run. I think they made like, oh god, eight to ten straight Little League World Series appearances out of yeah, British Columbia. Yeah, British Columbia was. Yeah. Here's the one two. It is me fouled back. Think of big moments at the Little League World Series. You think of when Cody Bellinger played there. Yeah. One two fouled straight back. You think of Big Al. <laughs> Dingers. The quotes are always the best ones. I think what Major League Baseball did, they had the Little League Classic. I liked that game. Yeah? They had every team show I, up to the game. I like that, too. I like that. We keep pulling Just another here. special event, right? The one, two, fouled straight back. And we keep pulling here on the broadcast to have a Sandlot game as well. It's the Field of Dreams game. Now we want the Sandlot game. If you could recreate the Sandlot and have a Major League Baseball on a... You'd have to have a grass infield. Baseball stand, MLB standard, but... One, two, again to Custodio, and he fouls it off once again. Wasn't that bad here in the third. I want to go away from Custodio here. Back-to-back -back at bats. He's in swing mode. They went in last time on the fastball. Go away in the dirt. Set up even more. Do it again. One, two, fouled off again. It's a learning experience for the catcher Pomelo as well. A young kid in the IBL. Set up away. It's one of those where you really want to spread your legs in your crouch. Have a big target. Be able to get that ball in the chest. Block that ball in the dirt. And I would set way off the plate on this one. You have a lot of pitches to work with. Get even wider. Another one, too. Fouled off again. Like you said, Colin, get that breaking ball in set there. Get it outside. Away. Way away. Studio swung at four or five straight pitches here recently. Set up away. Well, it's a one-two count. Two foul balls ago, that breaking ball, he was way out in front yeah, of go it. away. It Just got sealed. a piece. No, no, we don't. One, two is going to be hit on the ground and through the left side for a base hit. One of the better at-bats of the year, Reese. Sewell is going to come around third. He will score. What an at-bat. What can he do? What can Claudio Custodio do? We've been wondering that all season, Reese. What can't this kid do? Another two spot in the game. They put up two in the first, three in the second, and again two here in the third. I'll bring up Dalton Pompey. There goes the runner from second. Pitch is fouled straight back. Patterson had it stolen yeah, good as soon step. as Moore lifted his leg. Good secondary, good first step. That's for this runner. You notice that before, the one, that, the one foul ball down the left field line by Custodio. Went first to third effortlessly. Massive at bat in the ball game here, Reese. Seven one, Pompey up, two out. Here's the 0 one. It is high. Pompey already with a home run in the game. Two run shot in the first. Seventh man to hit here in the third. Morgan to look at Patterson at second. As we play in the third inning here, only one spot in the lineup has yet to reach base. Just the third inning. That is the number five hitter, Jeff McLeod. Ball is going to be hit on the ground to short. Orozco will throw over the to first base. And that will retire the side. Pompey retired for the first time tonight. But the Guelph Royals tack on a couple more. They lead at 7-1 after two and a half. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Pod Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Demaney along with Colin Ward. We head to the bottom of the third inning. 7-1 Royals lead it. This third inning presented by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. Makes, make this the best play of the night. Located at 61 Linden Road right across from Linden Park Mall. Camilo Roseco to lead things off. He is one for one. Doubled to start the first. Nice but pass. he's quickly behind here. No balls and two strikes. Nice fastball there by Dean. Two straight fastballs start the, that bat here to Orozco, just challenging him on that outer half. I go right back with the fastball here away, Reese. Here is the 0-2. Went away, just a bit high. Yeah. Actually, a lot of high. Away, away. Up, up, and away. Back foot here. One, two, big swing and miss. Not really a swing you want to see with two strikes. Four straight fastballs, too, by Deans. Here it is. Try and hit it. Oh, yeah, that's that dog mentality, Reese. Yep. Go at him. Now here's Nick Burdett. He's one for one. Singled and was stranded at third in the first. First pitch here from Deans is high. He's going right after these Red Sox hitters. One zero. -oh. He's going to be hit on the ground left side. Going to be a tough play. The throw across the diamond is not in time. Great effort from Custodio. He's got the arm to do it, but Burdett beat him by half a step. A lot of range there. A lot of range. I mean, you know, drafted as a shortstop, and in, in the majors, you can see that range that he has. Good arm, do cross body, as you mentioned. Good also, a good job there from Nick Burdett. Take that outside pitch the other way. Exactly. Talked about that having to be an adjustment as the season went on because he was strictly trying well, to pull play, every ball early. Especially with the way the teams have played the shift against Burdett. That's why I mean, they were straight up against him. Well, played Burdett straight up all season, but a lot of teams have played the shift against Nick Burdett. When teams are going to play the shift against you, you got to take the hits that are given to you. Never understand the majors as well when teams throw away when you're shifting. Oh, one fouled of, off. It's kind of like the battery just ignores the defense, the defense positioning. Never quite got that. Oh, two here. Watch that fastball away. Here is the 0-2 from Deans. It is fouled off. Emergency hack from Evan Ryan. That was a setup. Fastball away. This fastball straight up. Ryan expecting a breaking ball there, I think. Let's see if we'll check that ball off. The 0-2 again is swung on and missed. Foul tip, strike three. And Evan Ryan is out number two. Oh. I like this here in the third. I like this aggression by Deans out of the mound, Reese. It's his fourth strikeout balls. of the night. Got a lot of breaking balls on the strikeouts as well. Now Roger Keane grounded into a double play in the first. I like pitchers that pitch big. Pitch aggressive. Go right after guys. First pitch is high. Like Wolf Royal's bullpen is active right now. It's going to be an innings thing. Might just be a situation we saw in London. Just the majors were trying to get innings for three, guys. 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Good opportunity. I mean, when you're up 7-1, right, you got a good opportunity to get guys in. You got to take advantage of that. Count is 2-0 to Keen. Pitch from Deans is swung on and missed. Keen behind it. The ball rising up and in. The 2 1. In the dirt, it's going to make its way to the backstop. Burdett moves up to second base. We'll see if Keen can get him in here with two outs. Count three balls, one strike. Deans comes set. The pitch to Keen. 
is taken right down the middle, strike two. It looked like a really good pitch to take a daddy hack at, 3-1. Oh. Yeah, big dog got to eat on those pitches, Reese. That's a fastball right on the inner half. That's one that you got to look to drive. You got to look to swing on those. 3-2, fouled straight back. Yeah. Ends up going bar up. <laughs> bar out of play. Yeah. They're eating the mesh. Doing his best Toronto Maple Leafs impression. Going bar up and not down into the net. Yeah, David Ayers. <laughs> Here's another 3-2. It is going to be hit in the air. Right field and deep. Ball is carrying. And it's going to get down. All the way to the wall. Keen. A clutch. Two out. RBI double. And it's now a 7-2 ball game. Good adjustment there by Roger Keen, right? He probably regretted that pitch before, leaving that pitch before Reese. Then he gets a, he got a makeup pitch on the breaking ball. Now, now we know why Dean's has been going with the fastball so far in the evening, Reese. Nice adjustment there by Roger Keen. Here's Brady Pomerlo. First pitch to him is taken for a strike. Dean's coming right at him with the fastball once again. Stick with that fastball if you're Dean's. It's worked so far on the inning. When he's got to the off-speed stuff, that's when he has given up the contact. The 0-1 in the dirt and blocked. Tough pitch, fastball in the dirt. Oh, those aren't fun. Especially when you get in the thumbs and you jam the thumb. Yeah, I can confirm that hurts. Oh, I used to, yeah, I was not a fan of those. Obviously, it comes with a position. 1-1, one, one. ball is going to be up the middle, but it is going to be caught by Custodio, and that will retire the side. Sox do cut into that lead. It's now 7-2 after three complete. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Maney along with Colin Ward. 7-2 Guelph leads it. We begin the fourth inning. Bennett Moore is back on the mound. First pitch to Collymore is on the outside corner for a strike. Malik Collymore one for two. Single in the first and then lined out to second in the second. Hey, Reese Dumaney and myself have a good talk about hitting between the break in depth. 
The 01 stayed high. Are you a big, are you, so you coach 10 you. Are you a big guy that says choke up? No. I not honestly, the when my coaches told me to choke up, I gave them the look like, why? Because it, honestly, it makes no sense to think choke up with two strikes. When you get the two strikes, you would think you'd want to be in a comfortable spot. Obviously, you have to make the adjustment, but you would think whatever is comfortable. 2 1 pitch, foul tip. Yeah, I mean, really the only guys you think about telling to choke up are the guys that still have those, they can't figure out those how to not swings. have a long swing. Yeah. I used to have that growing up as a kid because all pitching body type, right? Get the 2 land. 2, swung on and missed. There's out number one here in the fourth. Nice breaking ball there by Ben Amour on the outer half. Growing up with a pitching body type, Reese, you know, I used to get that long swing until I grew, had a growth spurt in high school and learned my body. But it always, it was never fun having those coaches that always say, choke up, do this, do that with two strikes. All of a sudden, you're changing your approach. Not much changes. Get comfortable with two strikes. First pitch to McLeod fouled off. As a pitcher, Reese, and you catch, the toughest pitch is a two strike pitch. It's the toughest one when you have two strikes. It's the most times you think. Well, the one argument I do have for, for choking up, and for anyone out there that thinks that you lose power by choking up on the bat, that's not necessarily. absolutely not true. Shortens your swing. You're actually more yeah. compact to the ball. Yeah, it's just... It, and, if, and if you don't like choking up, it's just, you got to be able to make everything compact. Get you rid know, of your load. Get rid of un, un, any unnecessary movement. Literally just front foot and your front foot doesn't even have to move that much because you don't want that load right so it's basically just your arm hand, hands and arms going toward the baseball as long as you still have that weight transfer yeah from your back foot you really that put ball more, was roped on a line into right field you really put more stress on your back foot and nice piece of hitting there by mcleod right through first second base Yeah, it's, a, again, also, it's, it's all personal preference, right? It's, we're we're oh, yeah. saying this. We're not saying you have to do this. We are by no means professional hitting coaches. <laughs> no, but, but. It's, it's a suggestion. Also, another thing that works for guys that have long swings growing up is shining the light. The old Albert Pujols method. Not so dramatic, but think about it. When your hands are down here, as I about shoulder width apart, like parallel with your shoulder, when your hands are down there, all you have to do is go straight to the baseball. Thank you. Yep. It's almost like a fly swatter. And you get the fly, right? Short and quick, you get the fly. Short and quick to the baseball, the ball flies. Here's the 2 0 from Moore. Big swing and a miss from Roberts. It was interesting when the Blue Jays had Dante Bichette as a hitting consultant. He was mentioning that with Randall Gritchick. All of a sudden, Gritchick having a pretty decent year with the Colorado Rockies. 2-1, outside corner. Roberts didn't like it. And Oscar Hernandez as well. Yeah. Nice pitch there by Bennett Moore, by the way, on the breaking ball. Nice change-up action. Not too much break, but nice change of speeds. 2-2 two -two is going to be hit in the air. Deep center field. Gorecki going back. He's going to make the catch. Nice running play by Andrew Gorecki for out number nice two. Yeah, very nice play there by Gorecki. Reese. Got to get jump off the bat. He really read that ball well. It's been a tough part to play the outfield in. So have to get a read off the bat. And when you lose that split second, that's the difference between catching a baseball. By the way, that single by Jeff McLeod means that every Guelph, Guelph Royal has reached base successfully. In the fourth inning, two down. Royals lead 7-2. One-o pitch is gonna be hit very deep to left field. Tebbit going back and it's gonna go over his glove up against the wall. McLeod will get to third. It's a two-out double for Ellis. And the Royals are still in business here in inning number four, up by five. And 
Darius Barless. He's been on base a couple of times. He walked in the second and grounded into a fielder's choice in the third. First pitch here, he fouls it off left side. Colin Ward getting an interesting text <laughs> message yeah, from dad. just a second ago asking who taught you how to hit. Yeah, you know what? A lot of it came from my dad. Uh, a lot of good hitting conversations. It's awesome watching baseball with my dad. We went Sunday to the Jays game. You just talk hitting and pitching all day long. Barless pops this one up, middle of the diamond. Orozco calls everybody off. He's going to make the catch. And the Sox put up a zero here in the fourth, but continue to trail by five. It is 7-2 Royals. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Devaney along with Colin Ward. 7-2. Guelph leads it. First pitch to Colangelo. Swung on and missed. Strike one. This fourth inning presented by Forbes Renovations. From concept to completion. From start to finish, we are there to help you complete your project. Give them a shout. 226-791-1691. Or visit them online. ForbesRenovations.com. Colangelo quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. Pitch from Deans, looks like it stayed up, about letter high. Deans will face the six, seven, and eight spots. Here in the fourth. One, two is outside. Hit the timing down in the press box. Colin Ward's getting ready to hit up here. Here's the two, two. It is right down the middle, strike three call. There's out number one. And strikeout number five for Brandon Deans. That's just a fastball straight on the outside corner, almost down the middle. Middle away. Yeah, I got a middle lot away. of play. Yeah, that was a lot yeah. of play for a two strike pitch. Now here's Graham Tebbett. You First ever, pitch is down. Did you ever have that coach where you strike out lucky and say, did he get that coach with the smart remarks that says, did you bring your bat? Yeah, I think everyone had that coach. Yeah. I also had the coach where, you know, something happens and you do it wrong. Yeah. Say, say, you, say you go to field a ground ball and you didn't get in front of it or you didn't get your glove down to the dirt, goes five hole like the Toronto oh, yeah. Maple Leafs goalies in the playoffs. <laughs> and, you know, you, you come into the dugout and I, I had that coach that immediately goes, you know you're supposed to get your glove in the dirt, right? 
I go, yes, I know that. And he goes, well, if you knew, why didn't you do it? Based, like, and this, so is, when you sorry. Turn, this like, is when you turn around and tell your coach, coach, baseball is a mental game. You are going to be a Hall of Fame hitter. You are going to only succeed three out of ten times. 2-2 two, two is strike three called. Back-to-back -back K's here in the fourth for Deans. It's a tough sport to be successful when you get a hit three yeah. out of ten at bats to be successful. That's a tough sport. How many sports is like that? And I know it's a different 90 sport. 90 percent mental, 10 percent physical. Oh, 100 percent. I saw a tweet today about football. How many? If you had 10 carries in the NFL, how many yards would you get? Well, with the right offensive line, I'd get zero, and probably <laughs> 10 fumbles. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what I would do. Sports are hard. Sports are hard. That's the line of the There night. it is right there. 1-0. Very nice breaking ball from Deans in for a strike. That is the line of the night. And another, one, and another situation is, what's harder? Throwing 100 miles an hour or trying to hit 100 miles an hour? 1-0. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Yeah, that back hip. The back hip and the shoulder went with the bat on your shoulder, and naturally you're going to get that momentum to go around. Here's the one, two. It is just up. By the way, Major League umpires haven't been great this year, but they have been all over the check swings. I think the check swings is up more than it's ever been. I don't know about <laughs> you, but kind of a random thing to pay attention to, but it's been up. 2-2 two, two is in. Gallagher has run it full. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, no, Colin, that's not a stat I keep track of. It just caught my eye the last couple weeks. I'll start writing it down for the broadcast on Friday. <laughs> I'll have a triple header tomorrow. 3-2, swing and a miss. Dean strikes out the side. And we are through four complete. Guelph continues to lead 7-2. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Domani along with Colin Ward, 7-2 Royals. The 9-1-2 spots due up here in the fifth. First pitch from Moore is going to be hit up the middle, and that's going to get through in the center field, a base hit. So Sewell wasting no time going after that first offering from Moore and drilling it in the center field. Yeah, there's the aggression, right? You get a first pitch fastball, go up there, swing. You know, you scored two runs in the first inning, three in the second, two in the third. Scoreless last inning in the fourth for the Royals, but they've been aggressive. Get up there and be aggressive. There's nothing wrong with swinging at the first pitch. Not at all, especially in, especially in any league. I noticed as I got older, you get more first pitch fastballs. 
it doesn't really change. It's kind yeah. of odd. By the way, just like to mention, I don't know, you call this breaking-ish news. Major League Baseball, Dellen Batances has retired from Major League Baseball. What That's why I say breaking-ish. What a player he was in like 2017, 18 for the New York Yankees. Set up, man. Where all his Chapman came over. You have Chapman in the ninth, Batances in the eighth. Lights out. It's always a fan of, De- of Batances there just because... So big, mm-hmm. imposing on the rubber. That's per John Heyman. Heyman's a pretty accurate source. One one in for a strike. But definitely had success, that's for sure. It's always unfortunate with the injuries. One two. Ball is gonna be lined. In the right center field, that's going to get down, go all the way to the wall. Sewell going to be waved around third. Patterson is on his way to third. The throw is not even close. Offline, off the fence. He and thankfully, that. Bennett Moore was there covering. It was an RBI triple, and it's now 8-2. to two. Patterson won the Little League home run there. That ball was smoked. One of the best parts for the Little League when you get the Little League home run. It's the only way I could get a home run. Yeah. I'm never able to hit it over the wall. Stratford batting practice. Yeah, it wasn't a lefty. Must be nice. Yeah. They're in, in Cambridge at Dixon. Yes, Cambridge. Right porch. Right field porch. Is it like only 285? Yeah, it is very short. Really short. And then you hit the road. Yeah. If it's up, let it fly. Form home of the Galt Terriers. Dugouts on the same side. Yeah, That's... underneath the grandstand. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, I had a doubleheader there before. Yeah, not my favorite park to play in. Tough park to play Probably in. Probably not it's even awkward. top ten. The walk to right field for warmups when you're the visiting team is tough. Yeah. That's a long walk across the infield. 2 0. Big swing and a miss. Custodio out front. Custodio knows that as well. See the helmet tap. A little bit of talking to himself after that one. Another big Good swing, two and one. Good pitch selection. Now get out wide. You get a two-two count. Throw a ball in the dirt. That last pitch was a dead giveaway of the swing, just with their reaction. Anything close, you know he was gonna swing. Two-two is in the dirt, and it's gonna get past Palmerlow. A bring in a pitch. run, and it's now nine-two. Great pitch. Just the. Catcher Pardolo wasn't in a position to block that baseball. You got to get wide and you want to create yourself square to the plate. You got to be in line with the plate on those so you can keep the ball toward the plate and let the ball hit you. That time Pardolo kind of played that ball off to the side. Kind of got back on his heels instead of his toes, right? Trying to be jumpy in that situation. Got to square up to the baseball. Here's the 3 2. Get on the ground, foul. There's nothing better than throwing to a big catcher. Nothing better than that. Because when you're pitching, when you're pitching and you have a catcher that you know can block those balls in the dirt, they're going to be square to the baseball. Oh, it's a fun night. It's a fun night with the breaking balls. Another 3 2. Ball is going to be smoked. That might give Collymore's a way shot. Foul. Is that going to give Collymore's a shot? Ah, two houses down. Do we go to Google Maps quickly? Oh, my God. Do we split screen on the broadcast and go to Google Maps to show where that ball landed? <laughs> Stat cast? Jeez. So the oh, another 3-2 foul tip, strike three. And there's the first out here in the fifth. Great piece of pitching there by Ben and Moore. That slider going away. It looked like a cross-plate yeah, slider yeah. there. Two, nice pitch there by Ben. Fourth strikeout for Bennett Moore. Yeah, that ball landed about a house and a half away from where Collymore's did. First pitch swinging. Right center field, Gorecki going back, and that ball is gone. Second home run of the day for Dalton Pompey, this time of the solo variety, but he has gotten the Guelph Royals into double digits. It's now 10 to two. Yeah, fifth home run now on the season for Dalton Pompey. 
And he's in the 20 club. 20 RBIs now on the season for Pompey. That's three on the night. That was a, that was a shot. Right center field. That's probably as deep as you're going to see a ball get hit at this ballpark because the ball, you, I don't think I've saw a dead center shot this season. First pitch to Collymore fouled off. Grecki gave it a great look. He went up against the fence, tried to reach, to reach over and catch it. Yeah, oh, my respect. goodness. What a play that would have been. Whew. Here's the 0-1 from Moore. Breaking ball in for a strike. One thing I did notice, though, after that home run, as Moore was in his delivery, Grecki had not yet set back up in center field. He was still running back to his position. 0-2, breaking ball fouled off. As, you, as a pitcher, you want to give your fielders a second. Yeah. You give, obviously, you give up a home run, you want to get the next guy right away. <laughs> it's but. A, honestly, it's a, the worst feeling when you give up a home run, obviously. It's, I, I can agree with that. It, the, the part about pitching that makes it tough, though, when you have to stand there without the ball. At least give me the ball. <laughs> give me the ball. Because you're standing yeah. there and you're waiting for the umpire watching it, watching the base runner around the bases after he just got on a, just nailed a shot off you. Just give me the baseball. Let me stand on the mound so I don't feel awkward. Because it's, it's a lonely sight when you're standing on the mound like that. 0-2 oh, sword action there from Collymore. Second strikeout of the inning for Bennett Moore. Fifth of the day. And there are now two outs. Second time he's gone down on strikes as well. It is a very lonely feeling when you give up a shot like that and you don't have the baseball. Just give me the ball. There's a fastball away, Reese, on the first pitch. Big swing and a miss from McLeod. Count one and one. I remember All Mid fouled off left side. I remember Midget. I gave up my first home run last year. Midget in the OBAs. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Against who? Ooh, I forget the team. I mean, I don't care who I give home runs up against. It's going to happen. Every pitcher, once you get in Midget, gives up a home run in their day. I got up to Junior and gave up, in three years of Junior. I think I gave up three home runs. It's going to happen. You're going to give up home runs. And I remember when I did, I was kind of upset about it. And the coach comes out to the mound and goes, hey, it's your first of many. And then I kind of laughed. I kind of laughed. Oh, okay. The 2-2 two -two swung on and missed. Bennett Moore ends up striking the, striking out the side. But 12th Royals get into double digits. Started off by a single and a triple. Sewell and Patterson both coming around to score. And then capped off by Dalton Pompey's second home run of the night. A solo shot to right center field. Guelph leads 10-2. We're halfway through tonight's ballgame. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Devaney along with Colin Ward. Guelph leads 10-2 as we begin at the bottom of the fifth inning. 9-1-2 due up for the Sox. Grecki takes strike one. We may be seeing Danny Howitt get in that bat. Also for Nick Burdett. It's been interesting to see Nick Burdett get pinched up for in the fifth inning. Yeah, a little early, you would think. The 0-2 yeah. swung on and missed. Well, Recky down on three pitches. Especially with the bench being so thin. The pitcher's going to hit. That's four straight punch outs for Brandon Deans. Struck out the side in the fourth, and he's off to a good start here oh. in the fifth as Orozco. Excuse it's me. ground ball in the right field for a base hit. That's his second hit of the ball game, and he's on with one out. And as you said, we will get a pinch hitter. It will be Danny Howitt. Number 84, Danny Howitt. Like you said, Colin, the pitcher will enter the ball game now as a hitter. Because that's the only way you can make that move because now you only have three guys on the bench. Unless he... They're all pitchers. Yeah, I don't get it's... that. In the fifth inning, that's a very high risk. There was an arm warming in the Sox pen. I just couldn't tell who it was. I think it was Howitt. Which I, don't, I honestly, I don't get that at all. I really don't get that move at all. How it was throwing last half inning. 1 0 outside corner strike one. Yeah, it's interesting. I lost an OBA ring thanks to a oh, missed sorry. DH rule. I'm sorry. That's yeah, devastating. That was awesome. Yeah, that's devastating. Love that. I was very lucky to be one for one. You know, OBA am, finals appearance? Yeah, I'm 0 for 2. And you know what? You look back at it now and you think, if you're on the other side, it would be such a crabby feeling. Like, it's a terrible feeling. One, two, swing and a miss. How it down on strikes. Pitch outside, front foot goes away. A little long on that swing. Two strike approach. Number 70. Yeah, my first year of midget and second year midget. Back to back years, we lost in the finals. Going in undefeated. Both oh. times. Yeah, that's devastating. Losing to Peterborough the first year and losing Peterborough to was Waterloo underrated. Peterborough was second very, year. Peterborough was very strong. Just have really bad parks in Peterborough. Never liked those diamonds. Played Peterborough here in Bradford. Bradford Midget Tournament. Play Peterborough. I have been to the PMC, though, in Peterborough. Square, Square boards. Corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The square corners. Any hockey fan's got to go there for a game. Evan Ryan hits a fly ball to right field. It is deep near the line, but it's going to get down and bounce out of play. It'll be a tough spot. Being a goalie, that would have been a very tough place to play. Brantford, Ontario native Hunter Jones. Yeah. Former member of the Peterborough Peets. Now, of course, in the Minnesota Wild farm system. Iowa Wild. Yeah, he's in the East Coast last season. It's fifth inning, by the way, brought to you by Mattress Miracle, proud supporter of the Brantford Red Sox, located 441 West Street in Brantford. Visit them online, mattressmiracle.ca. Here's the 0-2 to Ryan. Swung on and missed, kind of. It was a check swing, but Evan Ryan clearly went too far. One hit for the Sox in the inning, but Deans ends up striking out the side for the second straight frame. We are through five complete. Guelph leads it 10 to two. You're watching Brantford Red Sox baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Demani along with Colin Ward. Bennett Moore done after five complete innings. He trails by eight. New pitcher into the ball game is Alex Gowing. First pitch from him is hit on the ground and it's going to get through the right side for a base hit. Roberts thought about second, but he's going to stop at first. It's a leadoff single for the Royals and they're looking to do more damage here in the sixth. Only one inning they have failed to score in so far tonight. And Alex Gowling, a former Guelph Royal, pitched back in 2016 for the Royals in 11 games. This being his 10th appearance on the season. 18 and two thirds innings pitch, 15 strikeouts, nine walks, 12.05 ERA, no record. So how it, how it will be the DH possibly come in as a last resort in the ninth if need be. There's a fly ball into right. Keene's going to make the catch off the bat of Ellis. And there's one down. Jelling's last outing came back on Friday, August the 12th in London, that 20-4 ball game where it wasn't an ideal outing for Gallon. You have six hits, nine runs, all earned. Face 14 batters in that inning. The 0-1 hit in the air, center field. Gorecki is underneath it. He makes the catch, didn't have to move a whole lot. Yeah, just drift over two to Two quick right. fly balls and two quick outs following the leadoff single. Yeah, just drift over to your right there and draw that baseball in. So that's at number 55, catcher Brian Sewell. Here's Brian Sewell, first pitch from Gowing is off the plate outside. Sewell, two for three. Been on base three times though. He's got two singles. He's grounded into a fielder's choice as well. Couple of RBIs and he has three runs scored. So again, out of the nine spot. That hitter doing damage against the Sox. 2 well fouled off right side. Roberts the runner at first. Here's the 2-1 from Gowing. It is in the dirt, but it squeaks five hole on Pomerlo and rolls towards that Sox dugout. So a free 90 for Noah Roberts and he gets into scoring position with two outs. set. Here's the 3-1. It is in for a strike top of the zone and the count is now full. Three two is hit on the ground to third. Colangelo fields. Throw over to first is in time and that will retire the side. Royals with one hit, but nothing across. They continue to lead 10 to two over the hometown Red Sox. You're watching Brantford Red Sox baseball brought to you by Bear Pod Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Devaney along with Colin Ward. 10-2. Guelph leads it over Brantford. Brendan Deans, he is done, and he was very good. Especially late in his outing. Was Six of the last seven hitters he faced all went down on strikeouts. Very aggressive with the fastball. Attack the Red Sox hitters away on that outside corner. And Braun making his third appearance on the year for the Guelph Royals, former Hamilton Cardinal. 0 and 1 on the season in Guelph. 1 and 3 total. Here's the 2 0 to Keene. It is upstairs. Ball 3. Braun into the windup, 3-0 in for a strike. The sixth inning presented by Brant Sports Excellence, the official supplier and supporters of your Brantford Red Sox. You can get all your Red Sox gear sold there. 415 Fairview Drive in Brantford, 519-752-3900. 3-1 in for a strike, and Braun is back in the count. It's now 3-2. That's pretty cool. Ben Braun's hit against the Brantford Red Sox in his career. Back in 2018. Here's a 3-2 to Keene. It is fouled off. He went two for five in that ball game. Two runs. I think 400. And you look at this Red Sox lineup as well. Yeah, not bad. That was a member when he was a member of the Burlington Herd. Yeah, back in the Herd days. 3-2 fouled off again. Yeah, look at that Brantford Red Sox lineup. DeAndre Ashbury Heath. Oh, what a name that was. Yeah. Soriano. Wilson Soriano. The Rizquez brothers. Yeah, Ricky Burnett. Murray's there. Burnell. Three two is hit down the left field line, but foul. Dan Jagdeo. Yeah. Dan Incozio. Mendham had a very good couple Mendham. seasons. What a lineup that is. Who pitched in that ball game? Oh! 3-2 is low, ball four, and Roger Keane leads off the six with a walk. The losing pitcher in that ball game for the Ramford Red Sox? His nice left fielder, Graham Tebbett. Tebbett pitched five oh, innings tonight. Yeah, Tanner Gwinden and Matt Betts, two guys coming in in relief. Yeah. Ben Braun pitched the final inning in two thirds of that game. Ball inside gets Palmer low. Now the Sox first and second with nobody out. Red Sox got a chip away now in this inning. The South get at bats, quality at bats. Next at bat, number 31, third baseman, Aiden. And here's Aiden Colangelo, one for two. He has singled and struck out. First pitch from Braun is low. Sox need runs very quickly. And it looks like this could be the inning that they may be able to get themselves back into it. The 1-0 is going to be hit up the middle. Braun will field. Throw on to second is in the dirt, and it is not caught. Everybody is safe. It'll be an E1, and the Sox have the bases loaded with nobody yeah, out. Spot, a big spot here for Graham Tevin. Next at bat, number 29, left fielder, Graham Tevin. Tebbe, look the V out of the batter's box. Look gaps. It's interesting talking about a pitcher hitting. Pitchers who rate Colin, you talk about it all the time. Hey, pitchers are athletes. Sure. As yeah, stand up in you the can say box. that. First pitch to Tebbe, swung on and missed. 
think the thought has crossed his mind about putting four on the board. I doubt it, but it's probably in the back of your mind. That slight glimmer of hope. A one foul straight back. I mean, you all, you always think a base is loaded. Bob Rolandt World Series since you're a little kid, right? Even that, you always think of bases loaded, Grand Slam. Yeah. I mean, you watch a Major League Baseball game, bases loaded, Grand Slam stats come up. 0 2 is low. Good layoff there on that back foot breaking ball. As for Ben Braun, this is, this is a big out here. Facing a hitter who's a pitcher, it's almost a must get. You must get him out. Ben Here, Brown. Ben Braun. Ben Braun, by the way, went two for five against him back in 2018. Let's work the count here for Grant Devitt. Foul it off, foul it off, get your pitch to hit. Make no mistake about it. Play five there by the catcher. Here's a 2-2, it is hit foul on a line. Paul Kirby having to duck out of the way. Yeah. What can he do? Well, the best he can do right now is get a ground ball past the pitcher. Yeah. Who's the second? 2-2 two -two is in the dirt and low. Keen is gonna come across to score. Oh, nice job. It's now a 10 to three ball game. Nice grab there by the pitcher, Ben Braun, covering the plate on that pass ball. Still nobody out. Count is three balls and two strikes. Runners up second and third now. See if the Sox can get that big inning. The 3 2 is upstairs, ball four. Graham Tebbett works himself a walk. Get out, Pat. Very good at bat there by Graham Tebbett. Oh, at bat, number 10. Let me throw the Royals' pad. Second baseman. No way. Yeah, now, you might see the old walk out to the mound. You see the pitcher, the bullpen catcher, starting to run out to the mound. Hey, get, get ready quick. Might only get about five to ten warm-up pitches. Make them count. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure this meeting is all about you're going through the bottom of the order. We can't be walking people. Yeah. We got that. Know, know the spot in the game. Also, now with Nick Bredetta in the lineup, I wonder if he even pitched. If you even pitch the leadoff hitter or Osco tonight, the rest of the night. Yeah. He's a top bat in the Red Sox lineup, and it's not a knock to anybody, but it's probably not even close right now for hitting. Why even pitch to him? Obviously, now the base is loaded, you kind of have to. But that's, that's a thought for down the road. There's two batters away. Nolan Gallagher stepping in, one for two. Single and a strikeout so far tonight. I would much rather face a guy with only one at bat. And he's 0 for one of the night and Danny Hallett. Oh, yeah. Here's a line drive, base hit into right field. One run's gonna come home, it's now 10 to four. Sox are in business right now, they're playing for the big inning. Bottom of the order. Unselfish at bats. Oh, next at bat. Number seven, center fielder, Andrew. Nick Burnett. Oh, right. I saw Nick Burnett in the dugout or out of the dugout, so I wonder if he got hurt. Because you would love to see that bat in the lineup right now. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I would not pitch to Orozco. First pitch to Garecki is in the dirt. When you have a pitcher hitting... Behind the Rosco, why would you face Rosco? He's two for three on the evening. When I went for a strike. Oh, 
The 1 1 pitch taken for a strike inside corner. Gorecki didn't agree. I don't think the fans did either. One, two from Braun. Ball is going to be hit in the air. Center field. Pompey is going to make the catch. The throw is going to be cut off. It'll go as a sack fly. Colangelo comes across to score. And the Sox have cut it in half. It's 10 to 5. All next at bat, number two. So now you have a bag holding. One out. I would do it. I don't think there's a need to give anything good here right now to Orozco. Two for three on the night, and he's hit the ball hard. They're going to, but the situation being what it is. Oh, big cut for a <laughs> And you always see it backfire when that happens. 10 5 ball game. No, run, no other runners advanced on that fly ball, I should add. Tebbit remains at second. Gallagher's at first. Roscoe calls time in the box. I think Braun and Sewell are having a little bit of trouble here with the signs. There was a little cross up there. <laughs> Here's the 0-1. It is going to be hit in the air. Deep right field near the line. Drifting foul it is going to drop foul up against the fence. Orozco put a good piece, put together a good swing, just a little bit late. Rosco two for three coming into this plate appearance. He doubled in the first, singled in the fifth. The 0-2, there goes the runner oh, from second. Jump. The ball is going to be hit to short. Custodio throw to us first, and they just got him. That's a Reese, that's a jaw-dropping play right there by the shortstop Custodio. Oh my. What a play. The arm strength on that one to really get on that back hip, on that back foot, and field that baseball out in front, take his time, and make the throw. A late throw, that is, with Orozco running down the line very well. Heck of a play there. That arm strength. That ball got over there in a hurry. That's impressive. Every time I watch him play, I just come away amazed with the talent. First pitch to how it is high and away. It just seems He's like if he can mouth. get to a ball, anyone's going to be out with the arm strength. <laughs> it's impressive. It's hard to believe with the way, and obviously, hey, I'm loving him in the inner county, but it's hard to believe with that skill that he's not playing A ball, double A baseball, or triple A baseball with the arm and the skill. It's hard to believe. 1-1 one, one is going to be hit on the ground foul right side. 31 years old, but the skill... Well, like you talked about early on with this Guelph Royals team, they've got the pieces to be like very Guelph. successful in the playoffs. I like Guelph going down a stretch in the playoffs. I think they're a very tough out, if One, not the two toughest. Outside. You see it all the time with the second seed winning the IBL championship, and this year is awfully close. Yeah, Guelph right behind me Welland. Me personally, we have no bias in the decision at all between the three teams battling for first place, London, Guelph, and Welland. But looking from the outside in, the Guelph Royals are right there. Be excited if you're in Guelph. Danny Howitt strikes out, and that's how the sixth comes to an end. The Sox do get three. It's now a 10-5 ball game after six complete. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back. Guelph leads at 10-5 as we begin the seventh inning here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. And it's the top of the order due up for the Royals. It's Patterson, Custodio, and Pompey. Number 50, left fielder, Ashton Patterson. I tell you, Ashton Patterson, he's been a thorn in the Red Sox behind tonight. Yeah, the top three in this Royals or order have been on base a combined seven or eight times. Yeah. Hey, it starts at the top, right? You look at the bottom of the order as well. The 01 is inside and it gets Patterson. Sewell, the catch of the ninth hitter tonight. Two for four on the evening. Claudio Custodio. Claudio Custodio. And then these two is not who the Red, Red Sox don't want to face anyone right now. No. This Gulf Royals order, but the first three in this inning, the minimum that we are going to see, Red Sox definitely don't want to see them. Especially Custodio after making a heck of a play defensively. There goes the runner, oh, pitch is high. Job. Double pump from Palmer Lowe, and Patterson steals that bag very yeah. easily. And you can see that on your screens at home. Just Palmer Lowe couldn't get that ball cleanly in his glove and couldn't get it out of his glove. A really good jump from Patterson as well. Even if he gets oh. it out cleanly, I don't. I still think he's safe, but yep. you get that double pump, and you really have no chance to get the runner at second base. See what Custodio can do with a man 180 feet away from home plate. Big 1 0 run. is going to be hit in the air. Center field. It? Patterson tagging. Gorecki makes the catch. Throw is just offline. It was a good one from Gorecki, just a little bit yeah. offline. If so that will allow Patterson to get to third. You know, if you're going to miss throwing a third base, miss on that side. Don't miss going behind the runner. Because when you take your third baseman into the runner, that collision isn't oh, good, and plus that tends to get that ball. That's an extra base. That's extra 90 feet you're asking there for Patterson. Yeah, because then you're forcing Brady Pomerlo to come over and get the baseball. Oh, There's the a point. chance it goes into the dugout. Exactly. If there are any other run. runners, that's a, that's a two base right. error. Disasters happen when you miss inside the line. Miss away. Now here's the first pitch to Pompey. It's in for a strike. It's similar to pitching, right? If you're going to miss a spot, miss away. Don't miss in. Pompey two for three. A solo and a two-run homer are his two hits. This pitch not even close. Pomerlo does a great job stretching out to catch it. Pompey is also walked in the game and grounded to short. Sox need a shutdown inning here. Put up three in the bottom of the sixth inning. Going for the hat trick. I wonder if any Royals fans brought their hats. We don't want to see that in Bradford. 2-1. Ball is going to be hit up the middle in the center field. A base hit. RBI single for Dalton Pompey. Royals get one of the runs back. And it's now an 11-5 game. Would you do that? If you were at a ball game, let's say Miguel Cabrera hits three home runs in a game. You throw in your hat? Ooh, that's tough. I like my Tigers hat. Say, like that's the new tough. Era, new era, new era is expensive. Yeah, that's tough decision, Colin. Probably not. We don't have the comments on, but that's a good. Uh, I probably chat don't. Question. I don't know. Depends on the situation. First pitch to Collymore is high. It's tough too, right? Miguel Cabrera, your favorite player, you know, one of the best hitters of all time. It, that's a tough decision. 1-0, there goes Pompey, pitching the dirt, throw down to second is just late. Pompey gets in ahead of the tag. Second stolen base of the inning for the Royals. That was a smooth release there by Pomelo on a low pitch. That's a nice job fielding that pitch. Did the throw off, that's tough. A short hop in the dirt. Good pitch to run on for Papa. The 2 0. In for a strike. Collymore looking to put the ball in play. He's gone down on strikes his last two times up to the plate. In total, one for four. And a single back in the first. 
Here's the 2-1, outside corner, strike two. Royal scored two in the first, three in the second, two in the third, three in the fifth, and one so far here in the seventh. There goes Pompey. Good Very jump. good jump. Throw down, not close. Gowing not paying any attention to Pompey out at second base. He takes third very easily. Do you think that's one of those plays where you can tell the pitcher's not getting an eye on you, so just take the bag? I'm sure Dalton Pompey has that decision on his own. I'm sure he has a green light to go. Here's a 3-2 from Gowing. It is going to be hit on the ground to short. Orozco will field. Throw over to first. Brings home Pompey. RBI for Collymore. And the Royals get another. It's 12-5. There's action in the Sox bullpen. Looks like Hayden Stam is throwing. 3rd hey. pitch popped up. Colin Ward is ready for it. Is it near us? Oh, over top of us. Just Great. over top. Clear above us, but I had that ball, Reese. I had that Colin ball. Colin Ward was all over I that. I was going right through this wire to catch that ball. Had one. I had that. I was on that. You were on that. The technique was good, too. I got up quick on my toes. It was good. I felt good. Yeah, good reaction off the bat. <laughs> good reaction time, yeah. Off the, off the couch to the fridge. Oh, and McLeod, not close. Oh, my God. Had it, though. Watch the laptop. Yes, absolutely. I was ready to Derek Jeter. I had visions. 1-1, one, one, going to be popped up. Shallow left field. The Rosco going back. He is going to make the catch. And that's going to retire the side. Guelph gets two back. And they lead it 12 to 5 as it's stretch time here at the ballpark. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium, Reese Maney along with Colin Ward. 12-5, Guelph leads it as we begin the bottom of the sixth inning. Colin Ward rocking out to country. I didn't know you could do that. Save First pitch to Ryan is outside. Save a horse, ride a cowboy, yeah. <laughs> and Reese looks over with like... You must be from Del High. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> with the wink and the nod. Here's the 1-0, swing and a miss. The seventh inning presented by Avenue Lighting and Design. 
Anything from lighting, window coverings, mirrors, wallpaper, and bath, bath accessories, they've got you covered. 405 St. Paul Avenue in Brantford, 519-756-9511. Evan Ryan behind in the count, one ball, two strikes. He will be followed by Roger Keane and Brady Pomerlo. One, two, swing and a miss. Ryan down on strikes. That's better approach than a two by Pat Braun on the mound. Third time Ryan has gone down on strikes. That better approach there by Braun, right? Last thing you saw a little more breaking ball approach. Yeah, yeah. Number ball. 14, right fielder, Roger. Now here's Roger Keane. He's one for two. He doubled back in the third. Drove in the Red Sox second run as he fouls the first pitch off out of play. Ended up walking and scoring one inning ago to lead off the sixth. And then one of our fans, who I guess he's a nervous whatever he's gotten from me, she was saying. The 0 1. It's going to be hit on the ground to third. It's going to get past Polymore. And it's just nonchalant on that ground ball. Went for the backhand, but just missed it. That's one of those there. You just got to square up. If you're Malik Polymore, then the third baseman, and a Royals, you got to square up on that one. Keep that ball in front of you. That'll be an E5. So as you said, he was there, ready to make the play. He got to the baseball quick enough. Wasn't yeah. hit too hard either. Just gotta find a way to knock that baseball down. First pitch to Pomerlo is high. One oh. Inside corner strike one. It's a little low Reese. Looks like that pitch went broke just below the knees. One one pitch right down the Ooh, middle nice strike one. two. Old Uncle Charlie there with the curveball. By the way, during the breaks in the LA Dodgers. Broadcast crew doing the slide in Milwaukee this afternoon. One, two, pitch. Strike three called. Second strike out of the inning for Ben Braun. Number 31. Yeah, we got to do that slide. Road trip. Yeah, road trip to Milwaukee just to do the slide. We'll do the slide and then leave. <laughs> Who needs to watch the game? I don't know. Can the public do that? Is that a thing? I like they have, they have a slide event. Yeah. You would I think. mean, look at Miami with the pool out. Well, the yeah, it's a pool. It's like a nightclub out there on yeah. the left field wall. They got the pool in Arizona. Yeah, that looks wild. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Cool. 1 0 line drive right back at Braun. Goes to second base, and that is going to be an easy out number three as Darius Barless ends the inning. And we are through eight, seven complete. It is 12 5 in favor of the Guelph Royals. You're watching Great for Red Sox Baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.
Welcome back. Guelph leads 12-5. We begin the eighth inning here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. New pitcher into the ballgame for the Brantford Red Sox. Left-hander Hayden Stam, who has pitched quite a bit this year for the Sox. Yes, he has. This is his 19th appearance on the age, pitching 18 games, 9.28 ERA, 0-1 on the season as he misses in, or he's some fastball up and in. 31 innings pitched, 23 strikeouts, 29 walks on the season. New glove today, by the way. Looks sharp. Yeah, they all white with the red lacing. Yeah. My favorite glove of all time. And you It'll be dirty know. by Friday. Yeah. Probably go all white glove. 2 0 fouled straight back. Colin Ward up and ready for it, but it's over our heads. It was more of a courtesy look, just a flinch. Kind of like Pompey's enough. first home run tonight. Just yeah, to see luck over the fence. Yeah. I robbed a home run once in Guelph. Not a boy. Without catching the ball. 2 1 is outside. Yeah, this is an interesting story, Colin. Yeah. Since you're playing Guelph, I might as well tell it. Bases were loaded, and I know you know the guy that hit the home run. And it was. So a two umpiring system. You had the home plate umpire. I don't know why I didn't make this call. Then the umpire on second base. And I just threw my hands up like it was foul, and they had like a five minute review, and they called a foul, but it was clearly fair. You gotta help your pitcher out. Had a boy. Any way possible, right? You're not not gonna do that when your team just gives up a home run. 3 2 pitches a breaking ball. And Roberts walks to begin the eighth. Number 19, right fielder, Owen Ellis. I'll bring up Owen Ellis. He is three for four. Two singles and a double. He's also flown out to right field. Gets to face a lefty here in the eighth. Well, if bullpen is active and you would think that they would make a change following the line drive from Colangelo off of Braun to end the seventh. Yeah. Get some innings in. Because you want to know what you have going into London on Friday night. The biggest game of the season for the Royals and Majors. Well, that park's going to be packed. It was packed last Friday. What an experience that was for us, Reese. Yeah, that was cool. Doing Tuesday's game and Friday's game. What an experience. That's set up. Yeah, not bad, eh? Ooh. So you get there at 2.30, and you get set up for 7 o'clock for a 7.30 game. A lot of work goes into that. Matt Hiscox Ooh, and it. everyone involved with Majors TV they have a whole crew. do a great job. Yeah, they have a whole crew there as well. Here's the 2-2. It is high ball three. I don't want to cheat the cameras, but what would they have? Five cameras going? A scoreboard, Ooh, backdrop. Math, math calling. First base, third plate. Oh, more than that. Yeah, around six oh. or seven, probably. Yeah. Here's a 3 2. It is just off the plate outside. Back to back walks here in the eighth, and the Royals once again looking to do damage. Number four, second baseman, Curious. Farless. Damn, just misses that one high. But that was quite the experience. Also, a great shot in that game as well. The moon just yeah. over the scoreboard at Lamatt Park. Yeah, full moon on Friday night. Yeah, what a shot. It was funny in the press box because all of a sudden during the broadcast, we have phones out right at the moon. Perfect picture. The 1-0 is going to be popped up. Foul territory towards the Guelph dugout, but it gets out of play, bounces on top of the clubhouse. Not a lot of kids around in front, so there's no one to give a ball to. That's one of Guess you're you make, keeping it. That's one of those you make the catch, you just slam it down on the table. Get the spike. Colin Ward's fired up for football season. Yes, I am. 
One one is gonna be hit on the ground to first and through the hole. It gets past Evan Ryan as well as Nolan Gallagher. It's a single for Darius Barless. Yeah, and Darius Barless just hit that pit, hit that ball where it was pitched outside. Take that ball away. Nice piece of hitting there by Barless. And all Ryan I got is Sewell. And all I gotta say is about the football. Let's ride. Or are you a Broncos fan? Just a little bit. A little bit. Russell Wilson. Fifty Cent. A little bit. <laughs> I heard that song today for the first time in God knows oh, how long. Uh oh. Can you imagine we? Obviously, we're not allowed with the YouTube and the rights and stuff. But can you imagine if we were allowed to play songs going out to the break? Oh my. Man. Am I allowed to ban country music? You can do as you please. Oh, okay. Well, that worked out. I might not be too happy, but... Oh, it's an okay. issue, not an issue me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. It is outside, and Brian Sewell's ahead. Three balls and no strikes with the bases loaded. So you're saying... I you maybe play the so odd country music every third game. So you're saying you wouldn't... Go to a NASCAR race? I would not go to a NASCAR race. No, that is not something I would do. No. All right, just check it. Oh. Three one is going to be fouled off. The only thing that, the only circles that I will want to see is me getting my paycheck and then it's circling around <laughs> to being gone. Yeah, it's no. almost Friday. Here's a 3-2 from Stan. Foul tip, strike three. Big out number one here in the eighth. Well, you make play. Woo! That'll turn things over. Top of the order, Ashton Patterson. He has reached base four times tonight. He's got a double. He's got a triple. He has walked, and he has also been hit by a pitch. First pitch to Patterson in for a strike. Happened to be an RBI triple in the fifth inning. Part of a three-run frame for the Royals. They've done that twice. This ball is going to be hit in the air. Left field. Tebbit is under it. Runner going to tag from third. The throw will be cut off. And it's now a Baker's Dozen for the Guelph Royals. They lead it 13 to five. That's a big run there for the Royals. Now we saw when you go from seven to eight, when you go from eight to 10. That was Noah Roberts crossing home plate. No other runners advance. Ellis remains at second base. Barless is at first. First pitch to Custodio is high and outside. Ball one. It's interesting covering the Hampton Bulldogs through at the hockey season when you see Noah Roberts. It makes you yeah. look at the it makes you look at the lineup, that's for sure. The son of Gary Roberts and the Hampton Bulldogs. Custodio, two for five, a couple of singles as well as three K. So he's looking to avoid the golden sombrero. Count is two balls and one strike. I'd say there's a lack of effort though. He's went up swinging every time. Pitch not even close. He's gonna come to the backstop. Three one, and I don't think you can have a bigger swing than that. Yeah, I saw a balance on that reaction. He almost dropped down to the one knee. The old Robinson Cano, or Robinson Cano, started that one. Robbie Cano lighting it up in the minors. 
Yeah. Minor league legend. Here's a 3-2 from Stam. It's going to be hit on the ground to third. Colangelo is going to have to come in. Throw on the run is in time to get Custodio. And that will end the eighth inning. Guelph leads it 13-5. You're watching Brantford Red Sox Baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience. Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Devaney along with Colin Ward. New pitcher to the ball game for the Guelph Royals. It is right-hander number three, Lucas Berry. And he is set to face the 7-8-9 hitters for the Sox. That begins with the left fielder, Graham Tebbett. And three bears. Eighth appearance on the season. 12 ERA. 18 innings pitched. 1 0 is going to be hit in the air, left center field. Good piece from Grant Sound. But Ashton Patterson runs it down for the first out. That's sounded hard off the bat, Reese. You got all of that one. 12 strikeouts, 11 walks, too, by the way. Strikeout to walk ratio for Barry. Number 10, second baseman, Nolan Gallagher. Nolan Gallagher, two for three, a couple of singles, as well as a strikeout. First pitch stays high, ball one. Very end of the windup, the 1 0 is low ball two. Big swing from Gallagher, 2-0. and oh, Count now two balls and one strike. Royals have scored in every inning but two. They have failed to score in the fourth as well as the sixth. 
2 1 is hit in the air to left field. Patterson makes the catch. Gallagher is out number two. Very good contact there by Gallagher. It's back to back batters. Tebbit, Gallagher. Good contact. Sounded good off the bats. First pitch to Gorecki is high. This nine spot for the Sox is the only spot to not reach base safely. He did have a sack fly in the sixth, but Andrew Gorecki has yet to fa has failed to reach base here tonight. Let's see if he can do it here in the eighth. The one one is a breaking ball that stayed high. One of two juniors in the lineup this evening. Evan Ryan being the other. Ball's going to be hit on the ground and through the left side for a base hit. Well, there you go. All nine spots in this Red Sox order has reached base successfully. Grecky oh, keeps the inning alive. Well, how, it, how it being on deck will have a third at bat. You kind of have to count that as well. Go! I think how it pinch hitting like that has to be getting his third at bat. They may have ten. So Rosco gets a chance to hit. Two outs here in the eighth. First pitch, big swing, foul tip, strike one. Seen that all night from Jamil Orozco. We've seen that all year since Orozco joined the Sox about a month ago. Month, month and a half ago. Barry comes set. The 0 1 is outside and it goes all the way to the backstop. Gorecki's going to get to second base. Seen a lot of that tonight, Colin. A lot of pass balls, a lot of wild pitches yeah. making their way to the backstop. Yeah, and that's something that both teams, batteries will want to clean up here as you head in the postseason. You cannot afford to have those in the playoffs. It's already hard enough to. Get guys out and they get on base. You cannot let them have free 90s. 1-1 one, one. is popped up. That could be trouble. That's right a long side, run. near the line. It's going to drop foul. One two to Orozco is popped up foul. No chance for Colin Ward to make a play. I need to get the MAGA glove. I just get the ball. Need that glove it. from uh, AT and T Park in San Francisco. Yes, that's what I need. I still don't think I would have made that grab with that. <laughs> that's how far away that was. Here's another one two. It is swung on and missed. Orozco. Down on strikes. Sucks with one hit in the inning, but failed to score. We will head to the ninth. Guelph leads it 13 to five. You're watching Brantford Red Sox baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.
As we head to the ninth inning, 13-5, Guelph leads it over the Red Sox, three and four and five. Do up for the Royals, that begins with Dalton Pompey. Switches sides, he will hit right-handed here in the ninth. Couple of bombs already in the game. He's got three hits, including an RBI single in the seventh. Yeah, I would say the second one went about 385, 380. 2-0 was fouled off. He just tried to hit his third of the night. <laughs> yeah, first home run, straight away right field. Sure found the batting cages beyond that right field fence. Here's the 2-1. It is upstairs, ball three. And his second home run, which was a solo shot, yeah, so made its way just to the left of the pretty, scoreboard. Yeah, pretty accurate, 350 and 380, you could say, 385. 3-1, taken for a strike. Pompey thought he had first base. Here's a 3-2, it is off the plate outside, ball four. Second walk of the day, issue two, Pompey. Bring up Malik Collymore. One for five in the game to this point. Here's the first pitch from Stam. It is just high. One zero is hit to left field. Tebbit didn't read it well off the bat, and it's going to get up against the wall. Pompey is going to stop at third. It's a double for Malik Collymore. The Royals, second and third, nobody out here in the ninth. I'll bring up Jeff McLeod. He is one for five as well. He singled in the fourth. One of the two innings that the Royals failed to score in. First pitch fouled off. Guelph has scored two runs three times in the game. They've put up three in one inning twice. Here's the 0-1. It is grounded right side, but just foul. on lefty matchup here against Stam. Stam set. The 0-2 is high. Yeah, look for some cross-plate action here by Stam. Get that left-handed tail, Reese. 1-2. Stayed high. Two line foul. Good at bat here from McLeod. But good, but really good teams do quality at bats right till the end, no matter what the score is. Whether you're up by eight, down by eight, up by twenty, down by set. twenty. Here's a two two. Ball is going to be hit in the air, deep right field. Keen going back. He's going to make the catch. Both runners will tag. Guelph adds another. It is now 14 to five. Championship aspirations. It's getting by prime example of that. We saw it in London. Yeah. You know, fi time, final first. score ended up being 20 to four, but nobody took an at bat off. Nobody gave yeah. away an at bat. If 
on oh, the London you majors. Cleveland Brownlee out there, by the way, playing third base. Yeah. Playing third base against Kitchener Panthers on the weekend. Say, but. majors put on a show in Kitchener oh, no. offensively. Yeah. Had themselves a very good week. Seven, Four wins. 17? First team to 30. This ball is hit in the air, deep right field. Roger Keane going back, looking just up, and that ball is gone. Yeah, just over the right field wall. Noah Roberts, two-run shot, and the Royals just keep pouring it on. It's now 16 to five. Here's Owen Ellis. First pitch is popped up. Left side of the diamond. Shallow left field. The Rosco going back. He makes the catch for the second out. That caught me off guard there. Third base, Nathan Clams are running straight out to left field on that play. Usually you kind of want to peel off there. Yeah, that's shortstop's ball, but usually you want to peel off for protection. First pitch to Barless, top of the zone for a strike. Oh, one is going to be hit on the ground up the middle into center field. The base hit, so the inning stays alive. That's Barless's second hit. Fourth time he has reached base successfully. That'll bring up, bring up Brian Sewell. Who will look to turn the lineup over. Sewell's got two hits. He's two for five. Three runs scored. A couple of RBIs. Pitches hit in the air, shallow right field near the line. Keen coming over, it's gonna drop. He actually overran it, slipped and fell. Barless gets to third. And Sewell has himself a two out double. Yeah, looks like Wolf was trying to go station to station there, and all of a sudden the ball gets behind you. You gotta go the extra 90. Like you said, you gotta play the right way, right? You have championship aspirations, you still gotta play the right way. If a ball's gonna go through a right fielder's glove, you gotta take that extra 90. You can only slow it down the best you can, but you still gotta respect the game in a way. Here's Ashton Patterson, eighth man to come to the plate for the Royals here in the ninth. First pitch outside corner, strike one. That's a 16 to five strike, I might add. Yeah, zone a little wider there by Nick Leffler, the home plate umpire this evening. A one pop foul. Stand quickly ahead, no balls and two strikes. Patterson has had a very good night out of that leadoff spot. Two hits, he's walked, he's been hit by a pitch. Scored a couple of runs, he's driven in a run as well. Here's the 0-2, it hits him second time today. And the bases are now loaded as Claudio Custodio will step in. You know Custodio is going to be aggressive here. Now, do you think he's thinking about it with the bases loaded? Absolutely. He's looking at that. He's looking at the scoreboard thinking, I want to put up 20. I think that's just the hitter's mentality. It would be the second time in a week the Red Sox give up 20 runs in a game. This is his seventh plate appearance of the game.
Here's the 0-1, taken for a strike. Sam said again, here's the 0-2. Hit on the ground, foul. Another 0-2 stayed high. One, two, fouled at the plate. Looked like you wanted to go for a big hack, but <laughs> at first ball I ran in. At first with the takes, it looked like he's just gonna take the three first three pitches. And now the swings are starting to get longer. It's almost the opposite. Is it possible to hit backwards? You yeah. pitch backwards, but another one, two. This ball is gonna be hit to short. Orozco reaches up and makes the catch and the inning comes to an end Royals tack on three more and they lead it 16 to 5 we head to the bottom of the ninth you're watching Brantford Red Sox baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience Welcome back to Arnold Anderson Stadium. Reese Devaney along with Colin Ward. Time for the bottom of the ninth inning. Guelph leads it 16-5. to This ninth inning presented by Sammy's Rec Room located at 10 Mount Pleasant Street in Brantford. It's a long time Guelph Royal, Ben Reed. Comes to the ball game. Close this game out. Be his 12th appearance of the year. 14 to third innings pitch, 14 strikeouts, 17 walks. He's 2 0 on the season. He will face the two, three, and four hitters 
For the Sox, Danny Howitt, Evan Ryan, and Roger Keane. We'll be back Friday night. 8 o'clock start here at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Toronto Maple Leafs are in town. Last regular season broadcast of the season. It has been the season, that's for sure. Here's the 1-1. High. Sox will then finish the season on the road. They will face the same Guelph Royals at Hastings Stadium Saturday. And then they are up in Barrie. Sunday night game against the Bay Cats. Again, figure that one out. The 2-1, top of the zone, strike two. Late night getting back, that's for sure. Especially when Brantford's had them here on a couple Sunday afternoon games. Crowd does not like this mound visit. It's just like difficult to see the signs. It's always nice when it's a 16 to 5 game and a person that comes in to close the game out works quick. Yeah, big time. Not the case right now with Ben Reed, but it's always nice to work quick. Here's the 2 2. Strike three, swinging. And there's the first out of the ninth. So, next at bat, number 70. First baseman, Evan Ryan. Here's Evan Ryan. He is hitless in the game. He has walked and struck out three times. First pitch to him is ball one. close. Evan Ryan now ahead. Three balls and no strikes. Roger Keane awaits on deck. Imagine red light here, but Reese, it's there. I'd swing. I would too. 11 run game. I'm swinging for sure. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Ground ball to short. Custodio had to play it on a hop. He's got the arm to do so. And he throws out Evan Ryan for out number two. Nice pick by Noah Roberts as well at first base. Oh, next at bat, number 14. I like that though. Right fielder. 3 0. 3 0. Doesn't matter when it's 11, run, when you got 11 runs in the ninth inning. Get there swinging. You're not looking to walk. Yeah. That run means nothing anyways, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're not going to get... There's no such thing as an 11-run home run. That's exactly. not a thing. That will never be a thing. First pitch to Keen is low. One zero hit on the ground to third. This should do it. Collymore makes the play, and that will end the ball game. The Guelph Royals. As we take a look at the standings heading out, Colin. Guelph Royals coming in half a game back of second place. Wellen with the win. This was a game in hand, by the way, for the Guelph Royals. They move half a game up. On the Welland Jackfish, it reads London Majors 1, Guelph Royals 2, and Welland Jackfish 3 in the IBL standings. Friday night, massive game in Labatt Park in London. The Guelph Royals have earned it tonight. They have earned to have that, the biggest game of their season so far. Friday night in London, that's for sure. So that'll do it.
Again, we're back at it. Friday night, regular season finale here at Arnold Anderson Stadium, followed by two on the road. We'll have the call for you just after 8 o'clock. Sun delay. Possible. We'll see. We'll see. Possible. Yeah. Late August. Mid-late August. For sure. 16-5, to 5, the final score. Guelph takes it. You've been watching Brantford Red Sox baseball brought to you by Bear Paw Gas and Convenience.